When making a list of the most evil Nazi women, it's challenging to come up with just 10. The women on this list were monsters, no doubt. Nazi ideology helped them achieve their full dark potential. So who were the top 10? Well, here they are in no particular order. See if you agree. Number 1. Irma Grazer Though the pictures you might see of Auschwitz guard Irma Grazer on the internet and in books show a rather plain and dowdy figure, she apparently was quite attractive in person. That's one of the common threads in stories about her. According to many accounts of her actions in the Nazi camps, she sometimes behaved like the evil queen in Snow White, absolute jealousy of anyone she thought was prettier than her. She didn't give these women a poisoned apple, she whipped them repeatedly across the face with a riding crop until they were unrecognizable. Then she would send them to the gas chambers at Auschwitz. She also liked stomping them with her hobnailed boots and shooting anyone she felt was disrespectful. She was 22 when she was hanged for war crimes in December 1945. Number 2. Ilse Koch How evil do you have to be for the Nazis to send you to jail? Well, it turns out that you could be evil and sadistic, you just couldn't embezzle from the SS. Which is something that Ilse Koch and her husband Karl, the Commandant of Buchenwald, were found guilty of. So he was shot and she was imprisoned from 1943 to 1945. Ilse was not even one of the female camp guards like Irma Grazer or the others on this video. No, she was simply an entitled, anti-Semitic Nazi wife who thought that gave her license to kill. And she was right. Ilse Koch, not the other guards, had inmates killed because she was fascinated with tattoos, a rare thing at the time. She wouldn't just look at them, she would have their bearers killed, skinned, and have the flesh dried and pinned on a board for her to look at, in her house. For years, stories circulated about how she had inmates' fat turned to soap, and while that's never been conclusively proven, many survivors swore to it. She was sentenced to life in prison and committed suicide there in 1967. Number 3. Hertha Botha Botha is infamous without people knowing too much about her. She appears in a famous picture and newsreel of female concentration camp guards taken after Germany's surrender. It's her in this picture wearing the insolent smirk, which brought home the seeming pride in what she and the Nazis had done to their victims. Hertha Botha was 6 foot 3 inches tall, 1.91 meters. Men found her imposing. The women she oversaw were petrified of her. By the way, female SS guards were called Aufseherin, which means female overseer. Bertha was first assigned to Ravensbrück, the all-female camp, for training. She was then transferred to Stutthof on today's Polish coast. Stutthof was not an extermination camp, but one of the most deadly concentration camps. More than half of an estimated 110,000 inmates were killed, mainly by guards, many by hunger or disease. By all accounts, Bertha was not the worst of the Aufseherin. She simply liked to beat other people to a pulp, often with her gloved fists. She was afraid of disease or her pistol. Before Germany's surrender, she guarded prisoners on one of the infamous death marches into Germany. She was found at the horror show of Bergen-Belsen camp when the British liberated it in spring 1945. She was sentenced to 10 years but only served 8, a strange and inexplicable act of clemency. In a post-war interview, she gave the following cryptic statement, Did I make a mistake? No. The mistake was that it was a concentration camp, but I had to go to it, otherwise I would have been put into it myself. That was my mistake. Number 4. Greta Bosel Greta Bosel was a nurse before the war. Today she might be one of those so-called medical professionals that we occasionally hear about that's killed her patients for years without being suspected. In World War II, Bosel killed openly, first at Ravensbrück, then as one of the women present at the infamous selections at Auschwitz, which decided who would live for a while and who would die. Furthermore, she was one of the guards responsible for going through the inmates' barracks, picking out those too sick or weak to work and sending them to the gas. If they can't work, let them rot. This was the statement Bozel was heard making during the process. According to survivors who testified at a trial in 1946, she was executed shortly after that. Let her rot. Number 5. Joanna Bormann, the Weasel Joanna Bormann was not related to the infamous Nazi Martin Bormann. If she had been, she wouldn't have needed the money, which is why she volunteered to become an SS Aufseherin in 1939. None of this is okay in any way ever, but at the very least, the others on this list believe that what they were doing was somehow right. Joanna did it for the money. She was stationed at Ravensbrück, where an estimated 30,000 to 100,000 women were killed, most of them resistance members caught by the Gestapo and other political prisoners. About 20% of the dead at the camp were Jewish. Bormann killed many of them by sticking her German shepherd on them. She too was executed immediately after the war by the British. Number 6. Dorothea Bintz Like some of the others on this list, Bintz was first detailed in Ravensbrück in 1939. Later in the war, 
she was transferred to Buchenwald and became the deputy chief overseer for the camp. Bins had no mercy in her. Occasionally, other guards might let an inmate help a friend or maybe slip them a cigarette for a job well done. Asking Bins to do anything like that was asking for a beating that could lead to death, through trauma, being whipped to death, or being shot. Worse still, she chopped an inmate to death with an axe for making an error during a work assignment. She too was executed after the war. Number 7. Hildegard Lechert, The Beast Lechert made the rounds of the camps, moving from one infamous camp to yet one even more so. She began her service in 1942 at Ravensbrück. Being a woman's camp, many Aufseherin got their training there. She was then sent to Majdanek, one of the six extermination camps, and then to Auschwitz in 1944, just before the mass of Hungarian Jews arrived to be gassed. After the war, she was sentenced to 15 years for just being a guard at Auschwitz. A cruel guard, but just a guard. Her sentence was commuted, and she got out after serving nine. However, it was discovered in 1975 that she had often been part of the selection process and had released dogs on her prisoners, amongst other cruelties. As a result, she was given an additional 12 years. She died in 1995. Number 8. Magda Goebbels Magda Goebbels wasn't your typical evil Nazi woman. She wasn't a guard or a wife of a commandant. As a matter of fact, she was about as close to Nazi royalty as you could get. The wife of Hitler's right-hand man and true believer, propaganda minister Joseph Goebbels. Magda Goebbels had a privileged life. She was rich, famous, and attractive. She could and often did drop her husband's name to get what she wanted when she wanted it. Most of the time, she likely didn't even have to do that. Everyone in Nazi Germany knew who Magda Goebbels was. Whether they were worried about the possible repercussions of saying no to one of the most powerful men in Germany, or whether they were trying to climb the social ladder or otherwise get ahead, people did what Magda Goebbels wanted them to. Imagine the lines you often hear on TV shows about a maid's unpleasant boss or something similar. I can't stand working for her, she's a real Nazi. Well, working for Magda Goebbels was working for an actual Nazi. By all accounts, Magda was a true believer and enjoyed her privileged life. Even though she and everyone else in Germany knew her husband slept with any beautiful woman he could, and he did, repeatedly, such were the perks of Nazi life. And what did Magda Goebbels do that was so evil? Aside from agreeing with everything the Nazis did, she murdered her own children. At war's end, the Goebbels had the opportunity to flee Hitler's bunker, but they stayed. They didn't even try to get their six children out, and they likely could have. But instead, they told people they didn't want their children living in a world run by communists and Jews. So, just before they killed themselves, Magda and Josef Goebbels poisoned their six innocent children. That's evil. Number 9. Alice Orlovsky it's hard to rank evil, but Alice Orlovsky might be one of the most evil women you have ever heard of. For what she did, she received a life sentence which was commuted after 10 years. 20 years later, with new evidence coming to light, she was on trial again when she died of natural causes. What did she do? She liked to whip prisoners across the eyes and blind them. Blind, they weren't able to work, so they were gassed. As the women, elderly, and children were being corralled into the gas chambers at Auschwitz, she held small children and babies back. Then, when the gas chambers were full, she tossed them in onto the heads and shoulders of others inside. She called it a space-saving operation. Number 10. Ruth Neudeck Neudeck only joined the Aufseherin in 1944. She must have been a dedicated Nazi and or wholly deluded, for it was apparent to almost everyone by 1944 that the war was lost. Neudeck was cruel, devising new ways to torment prisoners at Ravensbrück, and was so good that she was made the head guard at a Ravensbrück subcamp. Of particular note, she killed a prisoner by cutting her throat with a sharpened shovel. She was executed after the war. And here you have our list of the 10 most evil Nazi women. We hope you enjoyed our video. Please leave a comment down below about your thoughts and don't forget to like it. Subscribe to the channel as an offering to the gods of the algorithm and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.